How did you get in? That door was open. Is your baby come yet? Oh, no. When I wanted a baby, I just got it in a box. Where is your baby? His leg came off and it got dead. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't mind. I've got a mouse with fur. It smells of breadcrumbs. But it's got no fur on it still because it's so old. What will your baby be like when it comes? Oh, about the size of this bear. But with everything marvelously new. Have slate colored eyes, a face with a rather stern expression, and tiny little hands that hold onto your fingers so tightly that you can't get away. Well, I wish there were a lot of babies in my home, nothing but blooming grown up. Oh, Selena. Mrs. Dawson says that all the time when things aren't nice. Well, come along, Mrs. Dawson, and help me with the blooming beds, the blooming washing up, and the blooming housework. Morning, Lawrence. Oh, good morning, sir. I'll be glad to hear I did my homework I spent last night on your plans. And uh, I'm really rather pleased with them. Simple, dramatic, and some very pretty drawing. I'm awfully glad you like them, But sir. you've taken the devil of a time to produce them. We're way over schedule, so I'm calling a preliminary conference with all heads of department. Three o'clock this afternoon, suit you? Oh, must it be this afternoon, sir? I mean, I, I've got... dear fellow, have you had burglars or just a maniac? <laughs> no, I just rather got behind with one or two things, sir. Oh, what on earth is your secretary for? Well, she left last week. She said she couldn't find things and... She left. Oh, we can't go on like this. This job's got to have top priority. You're going to be working very hard. I suppose I'll have to lend you my Mrs. Reed. Oh. Uh, do you really think you can spare us? Oh, I can't have my leading architect working in a bear garden. I'll speak to Mrs. Reed right away. And I want you at 3 o'clock. Right. Not 10 past, 3 sharp. Right. Oh, that'll be Jeff. Jeff. Because he is the person who rings me up. I knew it would be you. I had a sneaking suspicion it might be you. What's the news? My daily help has arrived. We've nearly finished the housework, then I'm going shopping. And you? Crawford insists on lending me his secretary. He must think you're marvelous if he's lending his own secretary. Well, the point is, I don't like being organized, except by you. Well, we'll probably come to blows. You know how I like having everything within reach, under my hand. She'll file everything. Keep badgering me for details. All with the word tact in capital letters. And that, my darling, is the end of the news. Good morning, Mr. Lawrence. Right, I know what you've been sent for. Go ahead. Reduce everything to order. Uh, do you like things under your feet as well as under your hand? Yeah. Well, it depends on what it is. What's that for? Details. All the ones you don't want. I'm going to sort your mail. Mr. Lawrence? Can you call you back? I'm afraid Mr. Lawrence is extremely busy. medicines in the bathroom. Well, most people do. But Mr. Lawrence says nearly all accidents happen in the kitchen. And that's the place to have things. Now, 
We'll do your knee first, Selina. Oh, it's a nasty graze. My arm is worse because it's nearer to me. I shall have to put some iodine on this knee, Selina. Can't get all the dirt out. Will it hurt? Oh, it'll sting a little. What, like wicked wasps? No. Oh, wait. I'll see if I have anything else that won't hurt. Ah, here we are. It's something magic. Won't hurt at all. Watch. All the water will go purple. Will it make me purple forever? Oh, only for a little while. But then the people will see how brave you've been. Would you be brave? Well, I'm not brave at all. There. Mr. Lance again. He rather interrupts us. Hello. Oh, hello, Agnes. Ah, Lawrence. On time. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. I'm afraid I left my papers in my office. They are on the desk. So. Mr. Crawford's office. Somebody calling to know when Mr. Lawrence will be leaving. Well, we got a good three hours' work. Mr. Lawrence will not be leaving until after six. Who wants him? Well, sit down, Lawrence. Palmer has a list of the points I want him to raise. Now... The gentleman wouldn't leave his name. I'm afraid he's rung off, Mrs. Reed. So sorry. Now, gentlemen, the main problems we have are those of reconciling space with privacy and both with costs. Isn't that right? Yes, I'll say so. Goodbye. That was your mummy wondering where you are. It's lunchtime and she's taking you to dancing class. So you must rush home. My mouse can't go to dancing class. He's too old. Will you be all right by yourself? I won't be by myself. I expect I'll meet someone. And then Mrs. Lance put on the magic stuff, and I'm going to dancing classes all the afternoon. But I won't dance very well because I've hurt myself. And so I can't stay with Mrs. Lance anymore today. And so when the man has cleaned her windows, poor Mrs. Lance will be all alone. Oh, thanks very much. Cheerio. See you next month. Bye. Bye-bye. But I can't wait any longer. Huh? <laughs> no. I won't hurt you. I won't hurt you. Thank you very much. Would you like to come in for a quick drink? Oh, thank you. Not tonight. There's something wrong with our telephone. My wife will be wondering where I am. Of course. I expect she's wondering what's happened to you. This will burn you. Mark you for life.
Mr. Lawrence? Yes? I'm Sister Holden. Your wife's just come back from the theatre. I expect you'd like to see her for a moment. I is she all right? Yes, she's going to be quite all right. But I'm afraid... Your husband's come to see you, Mrs. Lawrence. Really crying. I must be rather tired. You drove and drove, and there were lights all down the passage. It's all right, my dear little love. You're all right. Where was my baby? Okay, Reg, test for me, please. Okay, thank you. You're uh, quite certain, sir, that your wife said nothing to you, either here or in the car, which might help us at all. No, I told you. She, she was unconscious. She was, she was in pain. God, if only I could get my hands on him. Yeah, we've got to get him before he tries it on anyone else. Mr. Williams, what on earth have you done to yourself? Oh, oh, put my hand on the table where that liquid was spilled, sir. Yeah. My wife got some of that stuff on her hands, too. But did she now? If any of that spilt on him. And the police believe it possible that there may be purple stains on his face or hands. How could you do that to me? Now, uh, what was your main impression of this man? I was on the ladder. I looked down and he was holding it. Well, was he fair or dark? He was wearing white gloves. He took them off. Uh, come on, Mrs. Lawrence, you're doing fine. Uh, was there anything, um, well, special about him? His voice, for instance, uh, did he speak to you? Yes, he, he, yes, he said he had been waiting and waiting. And then when I threw the stuff at him, he said, you're a bitch. You uh, threw the liquid at him? Yes. I said this will burn you to frighten him. Of course, he wouldn't have burned him. It was the stuff for Selena's knee. But I was so frightened, I wanted it to burn him. At least I didn't want to hurt him so much. I just wanted him to go away because it was so long, you see. He went on and on, like an explosion, not stopping. And I had such an awful pain. Did the stuff go on him? All over his face. <laughs> You've been very helpful indeed, Mr. Lawrence, and uh, very brave. <laughs> the trouble. I'm not brave. I'm not brave at all. <laughs> that should do you, miss. Uh, thank you very much. Mr. Lawrence, in yes? Not yet. One minute. Who wants him? The Mercury. The Mail and the News have been on the line, too. Tell them I don't want to speak to any blasted reporters. Um, tell her to say I'm away. 
Tell them we are very sorry, but Mr. Lawrence is not available today. How is your wife? She's getting on, I think. Could I do anything to help? I would love to visit her. No, she's not allowed anyone at the moment, except me, of course. Well, that's nice of you to suggest it. You know, she's lost the baby. Oh, no, I didn't know that. I'm so very sorry for both of you. When I think what must have been going on last night when I was driving home, I can understand why people want to kill one another. There must be a million women alone in this place waiting for their husbands to come home. There are a lot of women who are alone who haven't got husbands. I suppose so. Hey, does this desk mean that you're on indefinitely? Only till this scheme is completed, Mr. Crawford's orders. I see. What sort of flowers would you like best if you were in hospital? Very dark red roses. They're lovely. Thank you, darling. Goodbye. You're tired. Those darn policemen have worn you out. Never mind, when I see Dr. Shaw, I'll put a stop to all that. They shan't come again. Yes, don't let them. I don't want anyone. Nothing excepting me, of course. early tomorrow morning. What's when she does come home, she's going to need the utmost patience, protection, and understanding. She needs to feel safe. Above all, she needs to feel loved. Without any demands made on her. Any demands. You're trying to tell me that I mustn't make love to her? I'm trying to warn you that she may not want you to. In fact, she may not be able to tolerate it at all. But we really are in love. Well, that will help her to get better all the sooner. The only real cure for frigidity is the right kind of love. to me that you might be tired of living out of tin. <laughs> so tired that there aren't any left. Come in. I'm afraid everything's in a bit of a mess. However, I do have some sherry and about two clean glasses. Do you like a drink? Very much, but first show me where to spread the food. Mm. Is everything out of the living room? Yes, ma'am. And the bedroom and the bathroom. In fact, the whole place is looking quite stark. Hey, hey, dry those before you put them away. Boss seem to. What does your husband have to say about your passion for order? He isn't there to say anything. Oh, poor Helen. Here am I grumbling about being on my own for a few weeks. When... Is he at sea or something? I haven't the slightest idea. He walked out two years ago. I never heard another word from him. It's tough on you. It was. Now it's just quiet and empty. There. I like a cigarette on the fridge. Oh, my hands are wet. I really am very grateful for all this. Je vous en prie. Huh? French, for don't mention it. Well, now look, sir, I know it takes days, but that doesn't alter the fact that we didn't get the call till over an hour after he got away. Well, let me see what you have got. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. The super wants a list of all the areas where we've completed house-to-house -house searching. In order to tell me I picked the wrong areas, I suppose. You know, I don't think he's still here. I think you beat it right after. Got a hitch or something well, like that. Uh, favor the superintendent with your views, will you, when you take that list into him? Well, you said yourself he didn't stand a chance in the district. All those radio and newspapers and the people jabbering about the purple stains. Well, I'm fancy the pub myself, not while I got this lot on. Yeah, well, keep washing, Williams, keep washing. You can bet your life he will be. And once your hand's clean, we don't stand a chance. So I thought of a wonderful plan. 
darling, put that away. You'll get rheumatism surrounded with all those sopping Yankees. Sorry, I do try. But I, I just don't seem to have the spirit of a field mouse. Well, I have to know that they're terrifically brave. Listen, I'm going to take you away. Right away? Yes, for a proper holiday. We haven't had one since our honeymoon. I, I just want to be alone with you. You can pretend that you hardly know me, that we've only just met. I'll be with you all the time to take care of you. Just happen to have the same name. We just happen to have the same name. <laughs> you haven't smiled like that for a fortnight. It's not that I won't let you get away, my dear fellow. I can't. This new scheme of yours has reached a point where we can't do without you. July, on the other hand, I can promise. And July it'll have to be, sir. Weather's better, then. Lawrence, I don't like refusing you, you know. Well? Oh, Lord, what is one's private and professional life always have to clash? I never managed to have both at once. I've got your cigarettes. Here. Thank you, Jeff. It's I who should thank you. My house would be a shambles without my personal assistant. Just a part of the Crawford service. You build the houses, we keep them clean. You must be Tracy. Well, I don't suppose she'll be wanting to meet anybody new just yet. Wait till she's feeling strong again. She'll be so glad to get out of that hospital. I can't wait to get her home. Oh, well, there's three weeks in July to look forward to anyway. Please don't pack myself, sister. I must wash. Don't fret yourself about your hands. You'll wear off in time, you'll forget it was ever there. I think how nice it'll be to get home again. The awful thing is, I don't really want to go home. I know I ought to, but I don't. Many people feel like that, you know. Do they? They get used to being on an island in bed. They're afraid they won't be able to cope with everyday life. Oh, it's not only that. Apart from the safe, quiet feeling, I shall miss you all. Especially you. You know, you won't be able to remember my name in six months' time. I'm sure I shall. You'll be surprised. Now, your night pills are green, your day ones are red. And you go on taking them until Dr. Shaw calls a halt. Your husband will be here at any minute. Don't go. What does your husband do? He works for an airline. He was killed in an accident. Now, Mrs. Lawrence, I won't have you getting upset about that. I suppose I'm really very lucky. I've never held very much with luck. You can't change what happens to you. Only how you are about it. Your husband's as pleased as punch to be getting you home. I should think about that if I were you. I quite see why you're a special nurse. One field mouse, all present and correct. That's my girl. Thank you. Goodbye. Um, I'm terribly sorry, I've forgotten your name. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. So much was smashed up. Darling, I'm so glad to have you back. Don't. I'll go. It's your friend. I'm just going to collect your case from the car. I am glad to see you. I know you've been very sad, so would you like my mouth? It's my best thing, so you'll be very pleased, won't you? Very pleased. And honored. Ready? One, two, three, go. Have your bath now, if you like, darling. Oh, uh, my name's McKinnis. I'm from Scotland Yard. I... Mrs. Lawrence, I'm sorry to bother you at this hour. My name's McKinnis. The inspector's from Scotland Yard, darling. Oh, won't you sit down? 
Thank you. I suppose you've come to ask me all the same old questions. Oh, no, no. I won't bother with that. I was able to read the file coming up in the train today. I sympathize with you. They really did take you over the same ground, didn't they? No, it's really, it's just that um, I'm taking over the case. I thought it would be a good idea for me to meet you both. Why have you taken it over, Inspector? Well, we don't like these things left uh, in the air, and well, it's very nice country around here. You always lived here, Mrs. Lawrence? No, I was in London before we married. I worked there. Model? How on earth you guess that? Well, it's not everyone that can wear clothes, is it? I've given it all up now, though. It doesn't go with marriage. Would you like a drink, Inspector? Ah, uh, yes, I would, thanks. I'll get some ice. Did you go out at all that day, Mrs. Lawrence? I went shopping. Yeah? In the supermarket. I dropped a lot of parcels and somebody helped me to pick them up. Were they wearing gloves? The same. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. I, I seem to have spoiled your game of cards, didn't I? Is that a mouse you've got there? <laughs> that wretched child brought it. Selena's not wretched. She's my friend. Did she come that morning? She came twice. She went back home for lunch. It was for her that I mixed the... Ah, uh, yes, yes, of course. Does she live near here? Oh, about 300 yards up the road. Cigarette? Yes, please. So you're the secret smoker. We had a pact about smoking before we married, Inspector. Then I found millions of cigarette stubs around the dustbins. When did you find them? Oh, lots of times. But I thought it was one of the workmen. Sorry, darling, would you like a drink? No, thank you. All I want is a gorgeous bath. Unless you want to ask me anything more, Inspector. Oh, uh, no, no, nothing at all. It's uh, been delightful meeting you. Well, there is one more thing. Yes? If you're ever worried about anything, please don't hesitate to call the station. Ask for me any time, day or night. Thank goodness for the telephone. Good night. Good night. There'll be some hot milk out your bath. Yes, please. You've made quite a hit with Tracy. Yeah. I suppose they brought you in because they're starting a nationwide search. Uh, isn't it rather like looking for a needle in a haystack? I mean, he might be anywhere by now. What is it, Inspector? Why have you come here? Are you the heavy smoker, Mr. Lawrence? No, I'm not. I only started again about a week ago. That's what I thought. That man isn't just anywhere. I'm certain he's still here. He's not just an indiscriminate sex maniac. He's got an obsession about your wife. But the police based all their questions on the idea that he may attack somebody else. They haven't caught him and he hasn't attacked. I don't think they're right. Oh, Lord. It's very sensible of you not to alarm your wife about those cigarette stands. Those dustbins are outside the bedroom window. Uh, don't do that, Mr. Lawrence. Stay here or we'll never catch him. What do you mean? He'll be back. Just as soon as those stains are worn off, he'll be back. Of course. Pointy toes and a pointy hat and a pointy nose and a pointy one years old. Yesterday they married someone very wicked, so I don't go for walks with them. But now I've made a tiny little man round all over. So all the other people have gone because he's so nice. Goodbye. No, I'm afraid they're not quite ready yet, sir. Well, I know I had them last week, but there's been so much... I'm sorry, yes? Lawrence, but I want your pros and cons on all three estimates first thing tomorrow morning. Take them home, work all night, and be in my office at nine sharp. The inspector. Good morning to you, Inspector. No, the stains haven't quite gone yet. I'll check again tonight. Uh, there's nothing new, I suppose. You do wash a lot. Do you wish you were a felon? I'd rather be an elephant, because they each have a special person who washes them. Could we see it? I don't know. We could ask if we went to the zoo. Oh, yes. Now shall we go? No, it's too late. People never do things now and won't let children. Oh, Selina, 
I promise we'll go to the zoo tomorrow. Can't you have some tips today? None of this had ever happened. My bad dream all day. Hold my hand. Here. I suppose the old man's been shouting. I forestalled him. Said your car had been giving trouble. You sent a message, apologies, etc. I think he'll be all right. You don't look as though you have said much. Ah, I don't the truth. You're an extraordinary girl, so calm and collected. Nothing seems to rattle you. It's my job to look calm. Aren't you calm? I was, but I seem to have lost it. You can hold up for weeks with canned food. Any messages for me? No, nothing that's any use. Uh, the usual nuts who sat next to him in the flicks and got followed home. He must have his own premises. How's William's hand? Are oh, the marks still visible? Well, you know where to find me if anything comes in. Uh-huh. Oh, good morning, sir. Hi, Sergeant. What do you think of the chemist story, sir? I haven't heard it. Oh, only some chemist rang in to say his girl had sold a man some pancake makeup last night just before closing time, sir. Did he? Give me Mrs. Lawrence on the telephone. But lots of husbands buy their wives makeup. There's no reply. Well, go on ringing. Now, look, I want all messages. Repeat all messages the moment they come in. Well, she's out. But she wouldn't be if I got that message in time. I'm sorry, Inspector, but Mr. Lawrence is in conference and I simply can't disturb him at the moment. Of course. Does he know the number? been here again, Inspector. He's after me, isn't he? Not anyone else. No, he's um, after you. Do you know, it's a relief to know that. Is it? Well, it must make it easier for you. 
And it means all the other people are safe, doesn't it? Yes, I, I suppose it does mean that. I never thought of what it was like for the people to whom these things happen. I admire your courage, Mrs. Lawrence. Oh, I haven't got any. One day you may find you're wrong about that. Quite wrong. Tracy! Just got your message. Darling, what happened to you? I went to the zoo with Selina, and the man was there. Your wife fainted. Didn't you notice her hands? Yes, I did. Last night at about 1.30. But I had a meeting that was supposed to start at 9 o'clock this morning, and I was late. Well, now we know. You can certainly prevent it happening again. seen her for three days. That's really what I came about, Tracy, dear. I do hope you'll understand. You don't want her to come here anymore. That's it, isn't it? I mean, who knows? He may be lurking in one of the uninhabited houses, simply waiting to pounce on her. All the houses have been searched. You know, of course, I see what you mean. I expect I'd feel the same if I had a child. It was good of you to come, Agnes. Are you coming tomorrow? I haven't a moment all the week, I'm afraid. Tracy? I wouldn't mind. It's Roger. He says this is the most dangerous place. He won't hear of my coming. He had quite a row about it. Oh, I'm so sorry. I hope we shall meet soon again, when all this dreadful business is cleared up. the same if I had a child. Hello, darling. Jeff, is that you? This is Mrs. Lawrence speaking. I know who you are. Things very difficult for me. Not kind at all. I just want you to know that however much they watch you, I'll find a way. I'll never give up. You'll get your death, as my mother would say. I wish I had a mother to say that to me. All right, you dry your hair and I'll get you a nice stiff whiskey. You're always sorry for yourself when you're feeling cold. Yes, you're quite right. I'm sorry, darling. But I do wish I had an enormous, dull family that would put up with anything. Here's to the future, Tracy, love. Hello? Uh, wasn't anybody? Yes, it was. What is it? 
Tracy? It was him. He phoned while I was washing my hair. He said no matter how much they watched me, he'd find a way. He'd never give up. Oh, Jeff, I've got to talk to you how much more of this I can stand. Is there anything else you want to check with me? No, I don't think so. When he calls, I've got to keep him talking. I mustn't sound too horrified, and I mustn't sound too calm. And the longer I can go on, the better. Yep, that's it. Good luck. of Queen Street and Castle Road. 23 and 26 are the nearest. like you if you do these things. It doesn't matter what happens to either of us. Are you? Who is it? There's someone there. I'm here. I'm here. You're not alone. Traitor! you'd kept him talking just a little bit longer, Mrs. Lawrence, we'd have had him. I'm afraid it was all my fault. Jeff, I think I'm going to bed. I feel rather tired. Yes, of course. I won't keep you any longer. Now, don't worry. We'll catch him next time for sure. Have I got to go through all that again? Mrs. Lawrence, I'll do everything I can to find him without you having to go through another ordeal, but if I can't... Hey, isn't that rather a waste? I'm not eating cold scrap my for lunch, if that's what you mean. I didn't mean that. Is there any coffee? My doubt. Jeff, what's the matter with you? What do you mean? I'm just tired, that's all. I didn't mean that. Well, you want to know my headaches and the thought of a hard day's work fills me with something like nausea. I wish I had a day's work. At least it takes your mind off everything else. I'm sure you could find something to do instead of sitting around in a trance of self-pity and fright. What could I do? You tell me. I wish I could find something to do at your office. You've no qualifications to do any work there. You can't even type. Can Mrs. Reed? What are her qualifications? Helen happens to be a trained secretary. Added to that, she's exceptionally intelligent. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm not a trained secretary. And I'm sorry. I'm not exceptionally intelligent. You're not at all sure they're not sorry you married me. 
You're back you're jumping because you've been drinking. Call last night. Look, Tracy. We're both over raw. This doesn't make sense simply because Helen happens to be my personal assistant. It doesn't mean... You never told me that. Well, I'm telling you now. Anyway, leave her out of it. Look, I know you're going through an awful time. It's most unfair of me to snap. I know you can't help it. You could have helped it last night if you hadn't shouted when that man was on the telephone. The police would have caught him. It would be all over now. Do you realize what you've done? Look, Tracy, I said I'm sorry about that. Now, don't upset yourself. Stop treating me as though I were made of glass! Well, what are you made of, then? Ice! Look, I'm just an ordinary man, remember? Married you because I loved you, to have children with you. But well, that hasn't changed. Do you know what it's been like? Sleeping in the same bed with you night after night, seeing your face if I touched you just because for one single second I forgot that I mustn't do that? I have tried. I have been patient, but I'm not superhuman. Either I love you or I don't. It's as simple as that. Which do you do? Oh, I don't know. Forget it. I'm late. <laughs> There are no ifs and buts. Either your men have carried out a proper house to house or they haven't. Yeah, I appreciate it. Now, what that. about this area here? Have we investigated it? And these three intersections, here, here, and here. Yeah, that's been covered, I happen to know. Do you also happen to know whether, what are they, Garibaldi, Bismarck, and Napoleon roads have been searched? No, I'm not absolutely certain. Then what the hell is the point of crossing things off if you haven't done them? Give me the superintendent. What the hell's the point of doing things if you don't cross them off? Well, why don't you answer? Why don't you say something? I said I'm sorry. And anyway, that's not why you are bad temper. What the hell are you talking about? Your wife's position is intolerable. Why don't you do something about it instead of complaining about the police being slow? Well, what can I do? Take her away somewhere where she feels safe. Because, as you very well know, Crawford won't let me go. Well, send her away then. Then at least that man won't know where she is. But the police want him to know. There isn't anything I can do. She just doesn't seem able to face up to the situation. Can you? On my own part of it, no, I can't. If she'll go, I'm going to take her away. To hell with the project. shopping, would you? Well, not all this time. Anyway, she's taken to shopping by telephone. Your chap is there, isn't he? Oh, yes, he's there, all right. Look, I'll go over and see Mrs. Lawrence at once, and I'll call you right back. Right. Thanks, Inspector. I'm not going to leave it at that. I'm going home myself. You've made me see things rather differently. Bless you for that. When will you be back? I don't know. I'll call you later. Pound 18 and 60, if you please. Which platform, please? Catching at 2-7, are you? Isn't there anything sooner than that? 2-7's the first London train. Platform 7 when it comes. Thank you. There are three families living there. She's got a couple of kids and the old man's dead. 80-year-old couple on the ground floor and a blind boy and his mother on top. What about the basement? The bloke owns the place supposed to live there, but he's been away for weeks. Well, considering the buck that's been passed back at the station, we'd better have a recce. All right. No, there's nothing doing. He must be away. He's got a cat, though. He can't have been away for weeks with that. Come on. Hello, McKenna. 
Guinness here. Mrs. Lawrence is probably trying to leave town. I want you to alert all patrol cars. If they have any contact, bring me, right? Very good, sir. Yes, she's probably carrying some sort of case. Right. Well, why the hell didn't your man stop her? Our man was protecting your wife with her cooperation. The moment she doesn't want that, better you have a row. Yeah. Oh, it's all my fault. Oh, never mind about that now. Now, come on, Lawrence, concentrate. Try and think. Where would she have gone? Friends here, London, another country? Hello, McKillis. Do you have where? Right. Well, keep two men on. Tell them to move their car and I'll be right over. Have you got him? No, we found out where he lives. London. That's where she'd go. She hasn't got anybody here. I'm going to the airport. Oh, we've covered the airport. You try the railway station. I said, do in New York. He's as well as mine, you know. I mean, I don't like them either, but it's a bit late now, isn't it? I said that to him. No, he could always look at me, you know. He never said a word. It gives me the creeps. Shouting at me in front of the children. I wouldn't believe. Well, I'm speechless. Do you remember selling a ticket to a young lady in a leather coat? Not in the last ten minutes. I didn't say in the last ten minutes. Any time in the last two hours. I've only been on for ten minutes. Look here, Alan, this is my train. What platform is the London train? There's a, an indicator board outside, sir. I do love you. It's as simple as that. Shall we go home now? Need we, yet. You've come to hate it, haven't you? He spoiled it. He somehow filled the whole house so it doesn't belong to us anymore. I'm going to take you away. Today? Yes, I'll just have to do without me for three weeks. When we come back, we'll move. You won't stay there any longer. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Yes. Mrs. Lawrence! We've got him. Thank oh, the no. Lord for that. Look, I'm sorry. I'm afraid there's one thing more you're going to have to do, Boris. done to me. They're going to shut you up and I hope you never get out. All right, Mr. Lawrence, that's enough. 
for you like that. Of course she does. She loathes you. No doubt, Mr. Vine. No. That is he. I'll never forget what you've done to me. You see, I get you. I get you. Get my arm. What's it doing? I get you. I get you. Let me down. Let me down. This is Lawrence. I'm afraid you don't understand, Mr. Crawford. I really want to leave. I feel it's time I made a complete change. I thought of taking a job abroad. Oh. Now, listen to me. You want a change? You said you wanted to go abroad. I've got to send a couple of people to Saigon. Your French will be invaluable, but otherwise you'll have very little to do. You get a holiday, three weeks, all expenses paid. How's that? Sounds wonderful. Now, I'm not bribing you, but... <laughs> well, I am, of course. But I can't think of anyone better to send. Thank you. When would I have to go? Ah, let's see. Now, Lawrence comes back at the end of the week. In about ten days, I should think. Lawrence? Oh, didn't I explain? He'll be going with you, of course. It's his scheme. He doesn't know I shall be springing it on him when he comes back. Here we are. Darling, I'm so grateful we've moved. Darling, it's after one. You must come and get some sleep if you're going to start work tomorrow. Well, that's why I wanted to get things straight. Oh, they're straight by my standards. Come on. But your standards, Mr. Lawrence, are known to be low. Uh, Simmons can hang the pictures. Simmons? Ah, the caretaker. He thinks you're wonderful. Darling. Mm -hmm. That man is locked up, isn't he? You want to be married to me, don't you? You do want it. And you want to have another child, don't you, Tracy? Couldn't you trust me now? Come away from there. Are you even more afraid of me than you are of heights? I'm more afraid of heights. Come on. Come and get some sleep. to explain why I'm late. The old man's been telling me about Saigon. Some prospect. Oh, sure, sir. Uh, the usual, please, Harry. Here's your sandwich. You. Three weeks in a wonderful country. Six hours of dinner. I'll wait. I do, sir. And I'm sure you're the perfect person to travel with. Listen, Jet. You are, sir. One, two, three. You can come back for the rest, sir. Oh, and Crawford told me what a brute I am to work for. I promise to be the sole of consideration. You haven't told me. Did you have a good holiday? Oh, fine. But Brittany must sound pretty tame after Saigon. You do want to go, don't you? But I am not Here you sure. Are, sir. Uh, that'll be five and six, sir. Jeff, could I possibly talk quietly to you? Not now, but... Thank you. Could you manage to drop in this evening after work? Oh, not tonight, I'm afraid, Helen. You see, it's Tracy's first day back at work. She'll be tired. Besides, she probably bought all our dinner things during her lunchtime. Hmm. You mustn't disappoint, Tracy. What is it? It's wrong. Mrs. Lawrence phoned to say she doesn't know when she'll be back. She's very sorry about dinner, but there's cold chicken in the fridge, if you fancy that. Well, thanks very much for telling me. Well, that is modern life for you. Wives working and frozen food. Good night, sir. Good night. Sorry, sir? Just good night. It's 
no use, you know, Alan. I'm married. I love Tracy. I couldn't do anything but make you more unhappy. You don't have to tell me that. When you were away, I discovered what being more unhappy was like. You wouldn't know what it is to love someone. Never touch them. Never be touched by them. Do you want to make me more unhappy? Trouble is, I do. Very much. If I do go away with you for three weeks, what will happen when you come back? Then I'm afraid I'd really start making you more unhappy. Ski, we should have had three weeks. I could go afterwards, get out of your life. Don't talk like that, I can't bear it. Have a good day. Hard work. I'm not in training. You're very late. Where have you been? Oh, boring business dinner. I came back, got your message, went out to it. Darling. Yes? Don't be too long getting undressed. I'm awfully tired. I won't disturb you. Oh, all right, Constable. Thank you. Hello. McKinney's here. Yes, escape. Yes. He did what? Yes, escape. How the devil did he get out of there? How far is it? I would tell Davis about a watch on the old bungalow. No, 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 no. Don't worry them yet. I'll be up in the morning. Right. I don't care if he's got a sports car. He won't get there ahead of me. Another terrible scorcher. A drop of water dripping would just keep your flat cool, but there it is. I've mended it. Thank you so much. A wash is nothing. You wouldn't expect things to go wrong quite so quick. I've left the milk in the fridge of pint. Be off now and leave you on your own. Oh, I'll come with you. I have to go to work in an hour anyway. I'd like some fresh air first. Are you out tonight, ma'am? No, Mr. Lawrence is out tonight, not me. Talk about these here. Then let's get out of here. Clear us with the switchboard. Betty, if anyone wants Mr. Lawrence, he will be out on the site all day. What, all day? Oh, all right, thank you. Well, Lawrence is out all day and they don't know where. Check all the Crawford building sites. Find Lawrence and turn to ring me. Fine. Or better still, bring him back with you. Uh, Sergeant, give me all the reports on those roadblocks around the jail. I won't have one more check. All right, thanks. Well, give me the Lawrence's new phone number, will you? Hmm. He won't know they've moved, sir. He shouldn't know. 
Message from Inspector Davis. Mr. Lawrence is not on the town side, sir, and the other one's 15 miles away. All right, time to check it. Thank you, uh, uh, Sergeant. I can't help enjoying the fact that nobody knows where we are. <whistles> I wonder, when Mrs. Lawrence gets back, if uh, you give me a ring. Here's my telephone number. I'll do that, sir. You're a friend of theirs, I take it. Yes, a good friend. Operator, find out if Mr. Lawrence left his office alone or whether he was with anyone. If so, who? Right, come on, let's go. Now, a last drink and then dinner, yes? Anything you say. that he did get through. I like the way everybody's missing in this case. Who could that be? I have absolutely no idea. Look, I'll go. Is your wife here? Excuse me, madam. It's taken me the whole day to find you. He's escaped. We've no idea where he is. I've got to get home. She isn't there. Got any idea where she might be? No, I haven't. I think we'd better go together. you been? What an extraordinary question coming from you. Just tell me one thing. Have you had her here? No, I have not. Have you been spying on me? Yes, I have. I saw your car parked outside your business dinner. 
Well, it might interest you to know that Crawford wants me to go to Saigon on a job. And I had to discuss this with Helen. Oh, why? Is she going with you? Oh, Crawford wants her to. Don't tell me he's in this, too. Look, why can't we sit down and I'll explain? I don't want to sit down and I don't want your explanations. I just wish I were dead. You just run away from things you don't like. If you faced up to things, you might find them quite different. There's absolutely nothing left for me to face up to. I didn't think he'd be in today. I'm not. I came to see the old man, but he's tied up all morning. Would you take a message for him, please, Helen? Of course. Would you simply tell him that I can't, after all, go to Saigon? If he wants me, he can find me at home. Job or no job, I've made up my mind. It's not a shock to me. I knew you, you would do it. What can I do? I don't know how to bear it. I'm so sorry. It's all my fault. About these pictures, after all, Clark, when they do that in the new plaster, you have to drill, or you'll have a terrible mess, and the picture's down like nine pins. I'll get mine. Shall I make a cup of tea? What's that, ma'am? Shall I put the kettle on for some tea? Well, if you fancy it, I won't say no. Won't be a fix. I have to get my drill upstairs in the roof with the other things. <clears throat> Don't look. Close now. The Lawrence's telephone doesn't work. Bring Lawrence's office, will you? Mr. Lawrence's office. Hello? Yes? Right, I'll see you there right away. I must go. Is anybody there? They don't find you. Aren't you amazed to see me? I waited for you so many times. And now you've been waiting for me. Yeah. I'm not amazed. Move. You're in my way. RAC man found bound and injured in wood near A592 bypass. Was attacked Friday night over. RAC. Step on it, ma'am. We're very late. You just can't get away. We've got all the time in the world. I left my shoes by the bench. You don't need shoes. I need them. You didn't get your shoes. It was a trick. What have you done with the caretaker? Is he dead? It doesn't matter. 
You don't care if people are alive or dead. I only care about you. You'd mind if I died, wouldn't you? I can't, I can't think of anyone else. who has never hurt you, and you don't care. You don't even know them. They simply got in your way. That's right. Exactly right. It's not my fault. No. I'm beginning to think it's mine. You can't help what you are. But I haven't tried. Until now. the one. Don't be afraid. There's nothing left to be afraid of. Where is she? Not here, sir. The inspector's gone up on the roof. It's locked. Come on. with your right hand first. Trust me now. Let go with your right hand first. Now. Now the other hand. I can't! Help me, Tracy. Trust me just once more. Now. Now. Well done, Mr. Lawrence. Do you want to stand, my darling? Yes. On my own two feet. <laughs> <laughs> 